Hello, Ayed. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Um, I, I wanted to speak to you uh, today uh, because um, there's uh, been a four-day ceasefire between uh, Israel and uh, Hamas, and this mm -hmm. involved um, hostages and prisoners exchange. Um, a lot of people have been surprised when, the, uh, just to be clear, yeah, it's 50 hostages from Gaza, Hamas uh, are supposed to be released, and 150 Palestinian political prisoners. A lot of people were, were surprised, I guess a lot of people not very you know, well versed with uh, the Palestine question, were surprised that in the, in the Palestine, Palestinian prisoners, it included uh, minors, kids, children. Mm -hmm. Um, you work for DCI, Defense for Children International Palestine, and you actually focus on child detention. So my first question is, out of the 150 prisoners that are going to be released for Isra from Israeli jails, how many of them are, are children? Um, right now, it's not clear the numbers of children out of the uh, number of the 150 Palestinian prisoners who will be released because uh, the Israeli Ministry of Justice uh, uh, released a list consist of uh, 300 uh, prisoners uh, and the criteria it's prisoners who are be below the age of 19 in addition to female prisoners. So out of the 300, uh, there is uh, 123 uh, male uh, child prisoners, in addition to one girl, uh, child girl. Uh, among the list also 32 female prisoners, among them the child care, in addition to 144 uh, between 18 and under 19. So out of uh, this number, which is 300, 150 will be released. So it's not clear the percentage of children of this list, but uh, many children will be released uh, during this uh, list. Let's suppose that uh, the whole 32 female prisoners will be released. So the rest, I assume, will be children below the age of 18, because maybe according to the agreement between Palestinian resistance group and uh, Israel, the priority uh, is for uh, children and uh, female prisoners. Thank you, Ayed. So, um, so how come? How come there is actually uh, Palestinian children in Israeli jails? How do they actually get to jail? And why? Uh, actually, arresting Palestinian children is uh, very common in the Israeli military legal system. Every year, we estimate that around 700 Palestinian children are arrested and prosecuted in the Israeli military legal system that lacks fair, fair trial guarantees. Uh, the number of children who uh, may detained could uh, be more than this number, but uh, uh, according to the Israeli military legal system, the age of criminal responsibility is 12. So children below this age can't be prosecuted in the Israeli military legal system. So they could be uh, detained for just short period by the Israeli army. And after that, after verifying their age and discovering that they can't prosecute them in the military legal system, so they release them. Uh, in other ways, sometimes after interrogating the child, uh, they um, reach uh, the conclusion that there is no evidence that they can use before the Israeli military legal system. So either uh, they release him or issue administrative detention order against him. But most likely, uh, those uh, children will be uh, uh, released. So. Uh, arresting and detaining children is part and parcel of the way by which Israel is treating Palestinian uh, people who are living under um, uh, its uh, occupation. 
Uh, so, as I told you, around 700 Palestinian children are arrested and persecuted in the Israeli military legal system. We do not know exactly the accurate number because the Israeli army and the Israeli police do not share this number with us. But um, uh, every three months, uh, the uh, Israeli prison service released the number of uh, uh, Palestinian children in uh, Israeli prison. So it gives uh, it give us uh, an idea about the magnitude of this uh, issue. So in the last uh, uh, release of the Israeli prison service, uh, there was around 170 Palestinian minors in uh, the Israeli uh, prisons, and this was at the end of September. So, um, <laughs> what? Why are they in jail for? What? What is the most common, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. um, unlawful act they may have uh, committed? Uh, the majority of children are accused with uh, stone throwing, and the stone throwing under the Israeli military uh, legal system, under the Israeli military order sixteen fifty one, uh, carries a penalty, uh, a penalty up to. Uh, 20 years, but the average period that Palestinian children receive for throwing stones, it's around six months, and this depends on uh, how many times the child throws stones, the age of the uh, child, the distance, uh, the target, and uh, so many uh, factors, but um, uh, the average uh, uh, sentence imposed uh, on children is between four to six months imprisonment for throwing the stones. In addition to that, uh, they may be accused of uh, incitement, like uh, posting something on social media, uh, or position of uh, arms or, or weapons, or uh, membership in banned organizations. So these are the most common uh, charges against Palestinian children. And in some cases, they may uh, be charged with uh, conspiracy or uh, a stabbing attempt or something like that. So you're saying that only for throwing stones, the maximum sentence is, you, you said 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. this is, just to be clear, this is in the West Bank. Uh, let's say uh, a settler, an Israeli settler that is under the age of 16, um, or an Israeli citizen uh, throw a stone, uh, what's the sentence? Is it the kind of same sentence or is it very different? Uh, when speaking about uh, the issue of child prisoners, I think the departure point is all around discrimination through the existence of two legal systems in the same geographical jurisdiction. In the West Bank, uh, two legal systems are operating at the same time. The first one, which is the Israeli military legal system, which is applicable to Palestinian children, and the Israeli civilian system, which is applicable to Israeli uh, children. So despite the fact that Israeli settlers are living in the same jurisdiction where the Israeli military legal system is applied, but uh, they do not uh, try under the Israeli military legal system. They are tried under the Israeli civilian system. So uh, let's suppose uh, that uh, an Israeli settler accused of throwing stones toward Palestinian uh, cars. Uh, in general, he will not be uh, arrested at all. And let's suppose that he was arrested, he will be uh, dealt under the Israeli civilian system. And there are so much differences uh, between the Israeli military legal system and the Israeli civilian system in favor of the Israeli civilian system, because the Israeli civilian system was designed to deal with Israeli citizens, whereas the Israeli military legal system was designed to deal with Palestinians who are living under Israeli occupation. Uh, so the uh, Israeli civilian system, it's in line with international standards that regards that arresting children should be a major of last resort and for the shortest appropriate period of time. 
uh, during interrogation, children, uh, they have rights like right to be accompanied by a family member during interrogation and so on. But uh, Palestinian children from East Jerusalem, after Israel annexed East Jerusalem, they are tried under the Israeli civilian system. So in theory, they have all the right enshrined in the Israeli civilian system, but in practice, they are treated like their counterparts from the West Bank. Uh, so uh, uh, children from East Jerusalem, for example, they have the right to be accompanied by a uh, family member during the interrogation. But almost in all cases, they are not granted this right. So they are... Um, uh, interrogated alone without being accompanied by a family member. So what determines the legal system applicable to you? It's not whether you are living in this uh, geographical jurisdiction or not, but your nationality, whether you are uh, Palestinian or an Israeli citizen. So uh, this is uh, the situation how Israel is implementing its laws. And are, are they brought in front of uh, juvenile courts or is, are they brought into the same kind of court and legal system where adults are, are judged in, are tried mm -hmm. in? Uh, as a result of uh, mounting international criticism to the Israeli practices against Israel, because during the last 10 years, there was um, so much criticism from international groups about how Israel is treating Palestinian children before the Israeli military legal system. So Israel introduced some modifications to its military legal system. Among these modifications, raising the age of majority from 16 to uh, 18, because until the year um, 2012, there was two ages of uh, majority, one applicable to Palestinian children under the Israeli military legal system, and the other one uh, uh, applicable to Israeli citizens under the civilian system. So the one which was applicable for Palestinians, uh, it defined a child as everybody below the age of 16, whereas the civilian system de uh, uh, defined the child as everybody below the age of 18. So this simple example show uh, how Israel is discriminating against uh, Palestinian children. So what Israel did, uh, they raised the age of majority from 16 to 18 without giving any new rights to Palestinian children who are uh, above uh, 16 and below uh, 18. The same um, uh, was related to the establishment of the Israeli military legal uh, juvenile uh, courts because uh, the criticism was that Israel is uh, uh, trying Palestinian children before military courts. So they invented what's so-called juvenile military uh, courts, and this was in the year 2000. And, uh, uh, nine and uh, since that time until now, we are monitoring the conduct of this uh, military juvenile uh, court, and uh, we came to the conclusion that the military court it's like the military juvenile courts because it operates according to the same military orders, uh, the same premises, the same judges. Everything is the same, but the name is different. But when Israel represent uh, that they have a, a juvenile uh, court. So uh, anybody hear the term juvenile military court, he will assume that this juvenile court will respect the right of juveniles regards that uh, uh, placing children in detention as a major of last resort takes into account their best interest and so on. So the name itself, it release your imagination to assume how the court is operating, but almost they are uh, tried uh, according to the same uh, military orders. And after that, Israel introduced another uh, amendments to its military legal system, among which uh, reducing the period within which uh, children should appear before a military court judge. But uh, uh, during the last few years, 
they walk back some of these developments, like, uh, for example, uh, 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 there was, uh, and it was before, by the way, uh, some protection for children who are above the year of um, uh, 12 and below 14 years old. So the maximum penalty that they may uh, receive, it was six months imprisonment, regardless of the offense that they are charged of. But at some point, they make an um, amendment in order to open this uh, ceiling. So children below the age of 14 may receive any sentence if they are accused of uh, severe uh, ch charges. So uh, among uh, other developments, and this was during just uh, uh, since the 7th of October, Children who are 12 and under 14, they were supposed to appear before the military court judge within the first 24 hours. And children who are 14 and under 16 within 24, uh, 48 hours. And children who are above 16 and under 18 within 72 hours. Uh, but now, uh, after the 7th of October, children appear before military court judge for the first time uh, within eight days. So uh, regardless of uh, their age, and this is uh, regarded as um, uh, walking back the uh, protection that they pretend that they are offering to uh, Palestinian children. Just to give you an example, uh, Israel used, uh, uh, in the year 2013, UNICEF issued a report about uh, the Palestinian children in Israeli military uh, custody, and uh, they included in their report uh, 38 uh, recommendations in order to improve uh, the military legal system. And uh, now I can say that all of these recommendations are still valid because Israel do not implement any of these recommendations. Uh, in order also for UNICEF to follow up these recommendations, they met and uh, make like uh, dialogue with the Israeli authorities, and it leads uh, nowhere, and uh, nothing has been achieved. In the year um, uh, 2015, uh, there was a meeting called by the Israeli military or uh, the Israeli uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, where they call uh, or invited uh, all representative offices and embassies in Israel and the occupied territories in order to brief them about uh, the development that Israel took in order to improve the system. And at that time, the representative of the Israeli army or at that meeting was uh, a person called Israel Shomar, and he is the commander of Benjamin area. So he briefed the meeting about uh, what Israel did in order to meet its obligation under international human rights law and so on. Just less than two months, he was approaching a Colombia checkpoint he exposed to throwing the stones from uh, a Palestinian child. Uh, his name is Mohammed al Qusbe. Uh, this military commander uh, get out of his uh, vehicle, chased the child, uh, and shot and killed him. So this is the person tested with improving the Israeli military legal system and to bring it in line with the international standard. He didn't give the opportunity for a 16-year-old and a chance to live. So you can imagine how those persons who are vested to improve the Israeli military legal system and to bring it in line with international standards, how they uh, treat Palestinian children. And um, uh, there was uh, before a meeting between uh, Israeli representatives uh, uh, or uh, Israeli military uh, prosecutor and a group from uh, 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 UK, uh, independent lawyers who did a report also about the uh, Palestinian children in Israeli detention. And one of the representative or the prosecutor uh, uh, said that Palestinian children, they are 
potential terrorists. That's why we are treating them in this. So this is the, main, the mindset of people. Uh, so they are viewing Palestinian children as pot potential terrorists. So they deserve this type of a treatment, which is based on ill treatment and torture. Thank you, Ayed. Um, do, do, we, do we know um, how they are treated in jail? And do we know what kind of potential psychological um, you know, issues they have when they're actually released from jail? Mm -hmm. um, uh, for us as a, uh, an organization, our role is to get statements from Palestinian children. Basically, the organization was established 30 years ago or more in order to defend Palestinian children before the Israeli military legal system. After 10 years of operating in order to achieve this goal, we came to the conclusion that almost it's impossible to reach justice through the Israeli military legal system. So we started collecting uh, uh, statements and affidavits from children where they inform us about their experiences and we use this information in our advocacy. Uh, so now, uh, on average, every year we get or collect like uh, between 100 and 150 statements from Palestinian children who are arrested, interrogated, and prosecuted by the Israeli military legal system. And uh, the uh, statements show that almost all Palestinian children who are uh, arrested and interrogated by the Israeli authorities exposed to different types of ill treatment and torture. Uh, some of these types depend on um, physical uh, pressure like uh, kicking, uh, punching, uh, 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 blessing or forcing the child to sit or stand on position, uh, stressful position, and uh, so on. Uh, other types of ill treatment and torture depends on uh, psychological pressure, like threatening intimidation, like threatening the child that uh, they uh, will arrest other family members, or they will destroy his family home, or uh, uh, kill him, or throw him from the third floor, or uh, using military interrogation techniques, and so on. And the most uh, common technique is blessing the child in solitary confinement, which is a cell that measures one by two meters uh, without having any interaction with any human being. And uh, we noticed that during the last period, they resort more to uh, psychological methods of torture because it's more fruitful for them to get confession from Palestinian children because the whole atmosphere that the Israeli uh, interrogators try to create that I'm here like a god. I can do whatever I want. Nobody cares about you. Nobody know, knows about uh, you. Uh, the only way to get uh, out of this situation is to cooperate with me and to provide a confession to the allegation against you and so on. So uh, because the child is blessed, there is no channel that may challenge the channel of the interrogator. So the child tend to believe that the interrogator can do whatever he wants. That's why uh, DCI is trying to do our best in order to reach children during interrogation to provide them with legal counseling, just to send the message to the child that there is somebody who cares about you. We know about your situation and we are there in order to support you when uh, uh, needed. So these are the uh, types of uh, ill treatment and torture that Palestinian children are exposed to. Uh, in prison, uh, the situation is re relatively better than the uh, interrogation period. Uh, but uh, still, children, uh, during the first three months of their arrest, they can't receive family visits because for their family, in order to be able to visit them, the family should apply for a specific permit that enables them to be, uh, visit uh, their uh, child inside Israeli uh, prison. And usually, uh, coordinating... Uh, 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 for uh, to get uh, this uh, permit, it 
takes like between two to three months. During this period, uh, children do not receive family visits, but their family uh, can attend their uh, court sessions. So they can see each other, but they can't speak to each uh, uh, other. Uh, but during this period, uh, since uh, the 7th of October until now, uh, court sessions are um, taking place through video link. So uh, ch the child attend his court session uh, through the video link and the family is not allowed to uh, attend the uh, court session. So all these practices will leave psychological implications on the child who passed through this experience, whether it was the arrest and uh, how he was arrested during night hours and the early treatment that he exposed to and the period that he spent inside the Israeli prison. So I believe that everybody, regardless whether he is a child or an adult, will be psychologically affected. And um, the level of the psychological impact depends on the age of the child when he was arrested, the types of ill treatment and torture that he experienced and the time that he spent inside Israeli prisons. But in general, everybody will be psychologically yeah. affected because the whole situation is designed in a way to attack your psychological well-being. Thank, thanks again, Ayed. Uh, my last question is, do you find instances where um, Palestinian children that have been released from uh, Israeli jails are then, a couple of months later, rearrested? Uh, uh, in some cases, yes. And some of uh, them were uh, rearrested. And in some cases, they were arrested uh, again after they were released from the military court itself. For example, a child appeared before uh, a military court uh, judge, and the judge decided that there is no enough evidence in order to extend the detention of the child. So he ruled to release the child. The prosecution ask, uh, response was to ask the judge to delay the release of the child in order to uh, secure administrative detention order against him. So he was released and arrested without being released. So that's uh, during the last year, uh, we come across uh, several cases uh, like um, uh, this. So when uh, there is no evidence against the child to be prosecuted before the military court, they resort to uh, issue administrative detention order against uh, him. Uh, and usually it's up to six months and could be uh, renewed indefinitely. So. And during uh, this year and the last year, there was spike in the number of children who were placed under administrative detention orders. And the problem with detention orders that you don't know when you will be released because on the time or the day that you are supposed to be released, your administrative detention order may renew. So you have to serve another period in time. So answer uncertainty is engulfing the whole process. Thanks a lot, um, Ayed Abu um, it's, it's It was very important, and I think it shows that, uh, first, the system of apartheid that many people talk about is, is truly and objectively in place in, in, in Israel and, and sort of, you know, historical Palestine, and that... Um, and that when Israel says, you know, they they have nothing against Palestinian children, it is just words because you just explained that actually they do harass Palestinian children from a, a very early age. So, um, so thank you again, and and thanks again for the the amazing work that Defense for Children International Palestine is is doing. Shukran Tier.